In the early 1900s, our planet's carbon dioxide levels were relatively stable, but then came the Industrial Revolution, a dramatic and unprecedented surge in carbon emissions. Picture this, a time bomb ticking away. With the widespread burning of fossil fuels, carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, began to accumulate in our atmosphere at an alarming rate. It's like a ticking time bomb, threatening our planet's delicate balance. Fast forward to the 20th century, and you'd encounter a chilling graph known as the hockey stick curve. It portrays a shockingly steep rise in atmospheric CO2 levels. But what's the fallout of this unprecedented carbon surge? The consequences are unraveling before our eyes. More frequent and severe weather events, melting ice caps, rising sea levels, and ecosystems pushed to the brink. In the face of this crisis, there's a glimmer of hope, carbon sequestration. It's our lifeline to mitigate the damage caused by these soaring carbon levels. But what exactly is it and how can it help? Nature itself holds incredible potential. Trees, forests, and vegetation act as carbon sponges, absorbing CO2 during photosynthesis and storing it in their biomass in soils. Reforestation and afforestation are superheroes in this narrative. They involve restoring forests and planting trees in areas where they've disappeared helping to put the brakes on rising carbon emissions. The amount of carbon dioxide, CO2, that a tree can absorb varies depending on factors like the species of the tree, its age, environmental conditions, and location. On average, a mature tree can absorb between 48 pounds to 330 pounds of CO2 per year. If a person were to plant 50 trees over their lifetime, and each of these trees sequesters an average of 100 pounds of CO2 per year over its lifespan, so, by planting 50 trees over 50 years, a person could potentially help sequester approximately 250,000 pounds of carbon dioxide during their lifetime. Again, please keep in mind that this is a simplified estimate and actual sequestration rates may vary. What exactly is carbon mineralization? Well, it's a natural process where carbon dioxide, CO2, from the atmosphere is chemically converted into solid minerals, primarily carbonates like calcium carbonate. Now. Let's break down how carbon mineralization works. The process begins when CO2 in the atmosphere dissolves in water, forming carbonic acid. This weak acid reacts with minerals in rocks like calcium and magnesium silicates, found in Earth's crust. These reactions lead to the formation of stable carbonate minerals, which effectively trap and store carbon in solid form, preventing it from re-entering the atmosphere. Carbon mineralization is a natural process that takes a long time to sequester significant amounts of carbon. However, scientists are exploring ways such as mineral weathering acceleration to accelerate the removal of CO2 from the atmosphere and store it safely underground. Blue carbon? Well, it's a term used to describe carbon dioxide, CO2, captured and stored by coastal and marine ecosystems such as mangroves, seagrasses, and salt marshes. These ecosystems act as carbon sinks, trapping and storing large amounts of carbon in their biomass and sediments. Blue carbon ecosystems provide habitat for diverse marine life, protect coastlines from erosion, and support local fisheries, making them essential for both the environment and the communities that depend on them. But it's not just nature at work. We also have technological marvels like Carbon Capture and Storage System CES begins with the capture of CO2 emissions at their source. Once CO2 is captured, it needs to be transported to a storage site. This transportation can occur via pipelines, trucks, or ships, depending on the distance and the quantity of CO2. The captured CO2 is injected into underground geological formations for long-term storage. These formations are typically deep saline aquifers, depleted oil and gas reservoirs, or unminable coal seams, Continuous monitoring and verification are crucial to ensure the stored CO2 remains trapped and does not leak into the atmosphere. Direct air capture, or DAC, is like a magic trick for cleaning up our air. Here's how it works. First, we use big fans to suck in regular air, the same air we breathe right from outside. Then, we have this special stuff that grabs onto the bad guy, carbon dioxide, CO2. It's like catching a Pokemon. The special stuff we use in direct air capture to grab onto carbon dioxide is like a super sponge, but it's not really a sponge. It's usually a chemical material that loves to stick to CO2 molecules, like a magnet for carbon dioxide. When the air passes through it, 
the CO2 molecules get trapped in this material. Later, when we heat it up, the CO2 gets released, and we can use it or store it safely. Now that we've explored various carbon sequestration technologies, let's wrap up with some eye-opening statistics that underscore their significance in the fight against climate change. Global forests are natural carbon heroes, absorbing an astonishing 2.4 gigatons of CO2 every year. Reforestation efforts around the world have the potential to lock away a staggering 205 gigatons of CO2. Carbon Capture and Storage, or CCS, boasts over 40 operational facilities globally, capturing over 95 million metric tons of CO2 annually. Direct air capture technologies can remove approximately 900 metric tons of CO2 from the atmosphere each year. In the United States, adopting soil conservation practices could sequester between 25 and 75 million metric tons of CO2 annually. Our coastal ecosystems, especially mangroves, are doing their part too. They can lock away up to 122 metric tons of CO2 per hectare over 20 years. These statistics highlight the tremendous impact of carbon sequestration technologies. Remember, they should work hand-in-hand -hand with emission reduction efforts for a more sustainable future. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on climate solutions and environmental topics. Together, we can make a positive change. Thanks for watching.